Hey guys, in this lab we are going to determine whether an object which is acting under free fall motion uh, can be described by the kinematic equations, and if so, what is its acceleration? Of course, we expect the acceleration to be just due to gravity, 9.81, uh, but that's what we're going to try to confirm in this lab. We're going to do this two different ways. The first way, which I'll describe first, is um, using the motion sensor and the computer. So you'll have in your table either a motion sensor hanging upside down like this, where you can drop the ball underneath it, um, and record the position as a function of time. Or you'll have a motion sensor cage like this, where the motion sensor fits inside. And then you can take the ball and drop it straight onto the motion sensor cage and record the position as a function of time that way. Either way, what we're going to do is get that data into Logger Pro and then fit a curve to that data and try to determine uh, two things. Did the kinematic equations actually describe the motion? The kinematic equations should describe all. Uh, uniformly accelerating motion, so we want to first confirm that free fall is uniformly accelerating motion, and then we want to confirm what that acceleration is, hopefully it's close to what we expect for gravity. Alright, so I've pulled up Logger Pro, and now I'm going to try to drop the ball onto the motion sensor and try to record the position versus velocity of the ball. Okay, so this is actually the hardest part of the lab. You need to drop the ball so that it exactly stays in the beam of the motion sensor. Uh, to help that, I think you should switch the motion sensor to, uh, to the sensitivity to the ball instead of the carts. So remember, there's that switch which changes the width of the beam. That will generally give you better data. Um, I'm doing this with the motion sensor on the floor. Exact same thing would happen if the motion sensor was above it. Um, both of them are equally difficult to do. So. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand over the, the uh, motion sensor, try to line up as best as I can, start taking data. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. So if I looks pretty good, what I mean is that there's a very nice parabolic shape right here. So I'm going to zoom in on both of these guys. So when I drop the ball somewhere around here, it hit the sensor somewhere around here. So that's really the only part of the data which we should expect will be constantly accelerated motion. So I should be able to highlight this thing. And to do the curve fitting, I highlight the region which I think um, satisfies the kinematic equations, which is before it hits the ground, after I drop it. Go up to Analyze, go to Curve Fit, and then you have a whole selection of equations. So this is the position. We expect the position to be dependent on t squared and t, so it looks like this equation right here is the correct, correct one. It says quadratic. Uh, you can click Try Fit. It will give you some numbers a, b, and c. Click OK, and it will display it right there on the plot for you. So the next stage, um, which you're going to be doing in the lab, is relating A, B, and C to real physical parameters to try to determine if, uh, if gravity actually does act on free, freely falling objects with a constantly accelerated motion. Um, so that's the first way of finding the acceleration due to gravity in this lab. So the second way we're going to find the acceleration due to gravity and confirm the kinematic equations is just by dropping these balls. So these plastic baseball-y things um, actually have a cool little clock in them. So what you can do is you can push the button, which is right on the screen there, hold the ball, and when you let go of the button, the timer will start. And when it hits the ground, the timer will stop. So just by doing that, I can pick up the ball and read the amount of time that it fell right off the screen. So if I know how far it fell, and I know how much time it took, I can figure out the acceleration of that ball. So we're going to use a different kinematic equation to confirm uh, the acceleration due to gravity that way than from the first part. Hopefully they'll agree, and hopefully we'll be able to say with confirmation that the kinematic equations for constant accelerated motion do indeed um, describe free falling motion. Okay, great. Thank you guys, and I will see you in the